Hey everybody, welcome back. Okay, in the last couple of podcasts, we've been putting together this little application here. And really, I wanna keep this simple. I know we got you know multiple files going on right now, but let's just kind of back up for a second. Let's review what we've done. What we're doing is we're using the PHP built-in includes function. And what we're doing is we're passing a variable uh, onto one of those includes, and that variable selects a different page depending on what variable we've put in. So potentially we have a, a four-page website that's real simple in how it's put together. Uh, so let's look review real quick. We've got three files up on the root directory, index, header, and footer. And then we have a folder called content. Inside of that we have our four various content pages. And now what's cool about this is we've separated things out. So this becomes very easy to update. This is much like later when we get into databases and how you connect to a database to pull content out. Right now we're just using files instead of a database. Obviously the database, if you had a huge website, would be um, a better idea. Um, but anyway, you can see right now that if I click on any of these, it's just H it's just simple HTML that goes in here. I don't have to have a well-formatted document or anything because it's going to paste this in. So remember, includes are like this. Um, you know, if you order a sandwich at a restaurant, uh, you could have you know pastrami and cheese and lettuce. And I'm not worried about what each one of those things is because the guy who made my sandwich just put them all together. So think of it like that: is that this index page is simply putting it all together. And so this is kind of like the meat of your sandwich, so to speak here. And these four documents are all in the content and they're just very simple. I could I could go ahead and modify the content further here, but I don't have to attach a style sheet every time and I don't have to attach JavaScripts if I'm using those or, or you know all these things. I just write what's in my content as far as our purposes here go. So let's go ahead and close these documents real quick. And let's review here that we see the index page and the, the meat of this is right here, these three includes. Include the header, include the content, and include the footer. What we did is we set a, a variable called page, and we said that that's going to be taken from the URL, from the variable there called page. And if there isn't a page specified, then hey, create a page and set it to home. So this is all these. So this, this is if no page, so that's what this exclamation point means. If there's not a page, then page equals home. And then we go through here and we'll say index, or excuse me, include the header, include the content, and we're going to insert the name of that page there. So it's in the content folder, the name of the variable, .php, and include the footer. Okay, So that's where we are up to this point. Uh, what I want to do is I want to back up here and we're going to do some styles. Uh, we're going to add those to this. And we're going to allow the variable to kind of come through and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that over the next two here uh, and, and be able to affect the style sheet. And this is really useful and really cool. But let's go ahead first and let's select some styles. Um, what I want to do here is just some quick stuff. Let's go into the CSS folder, the styles.css. The first thing we need to do is link up this style sheet. But what's cool is I have a four page website here, but I only have to do this once. And that would be in the header of the document, as you probably guessed. Let's drop down under title where it says untitled. And let's go ahead and drop the style sheet in there. And it's going to be link href tag equals CSS slash style CSS. So that's where it lives. The type is text slash CSS and the rel relationship is a style sheet. Okay, now this is going back many episodes here and so I hope you haven't forgotten everything about style sheets and CSS. And if you have, then hey, this is a good time to go ahead and we'll revisit this. Okay, uh, what I want to do here, let's also, just so this doesn't look completely foreign, under the body tag here, I'm going to add an element. Let's just say an H1 tag and this says uh, my groovy website or just say my website or something. Okay, that way we have a little logo or logo here, or whatever you want to say, and then we'll have the navigation under that and so on and so forth. Now, because I've added it into the header document, I, I do it once, I've done it on every page, okay, so we're good to go here. So if, for instance, if I go back over here and just simply refresh the page that we've got and see that here it is, my header. And what we need to do is style our navigation a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to very quickly go through this. If you are new to the podcast or this is your first time, uh, and you might want to go back and review the style sheet stuff if you have no idea what I'm talking about in here. Um, so what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to work on styling this list into a navigation. So this is an unordered list. So I'm simply going to address the UL um, and let's say the margin going to be zero and the padding is going to be zero. Now, a word to the wise here. Um, because this is a you know potentially full-on website, I'm keeping things simple for our demonstration here. And so remember, if I target a tag here, the UL tag, it will happen with every unordered list that I see on my website. So if you are doing navigation, you may want bullet points later on in your site. So it would probably be a better idea in terms of CSS uh, to create a class for both of these, but we're not going to worry about that just now. Um, I want to keep it simple for our purposes here just so you can see how this is done and then you can apply it to your own 
own use later. Okay, so we'll save the UL, we'll margins in the, uh, take the margin, the padding, and zero the map. Let's go to the list item. And what we're going to do is I'm going to say display, and we're going to say inline. And that's good to go there. Um, and then let's go down here to the A tag. Okay, and we're, again, you wouldn't want to do this with every link on your site. So again, uh, some kind of direction in the CSS as to which one of these you're talking about in the navigation. So using classes or divs or something like that. But for now, let's just take all the A tags, all the links. And what we're going to do is the following. Let's say, um, first of all, let's set the color to black. Uh, just keep this simple. Let's say text decoration. Let's get rid of that underline. Let's say none. And let's go back here real quick. Uh, the other thing we need to do is to say display is block. And what this does is this is going to get it out of the bullet points and it's going to make it so we can adjust um, just these as, as if they're each a little div or a little box or something like that. So we'll say display is block and then we'll say we have to say float left. Uh, and there's going to be a little bug we have to go fix in a second, and I'll show you what that is. So here's float left, and finally, um, uh, let's go ahead and give it some padding of 10 pixels. Okay. Now, when we go back here and refresh, you can see that it worked, but because I've used the float left for each one of these, these are going to be buttons in the end. It took our content and it actually ganked it up here. So one thing I want to do probably is we need to use, if you remember from the CSS episodes, we need to use the clear uh, attribute style attribute and this is really easy to do again we're using you know a minimal amount of code to span across you know four pages in a website here so I can do this once and it goes into every web page so what we need to do is put a div around all of our content now, don't get it confused with contact here let's go to products so you can see uh, we're gonna put a div around our content which is where this products thing lives and we need to make that not float so what I'm gonna do here is let's go back into the header and then right under here, what we're going to do is just say an open div tag, and let's give that an ID. Let's set something we know. We'll, we'll call it content. Content. And basically anything inside of here will happen in the content page that, that is brought up. And then let's go into the footer and let's close that div out. Okay, so does it make sense what I'm doing is we're opening open and close div tags, and that content goes in the middle with, via the includes. So. Anyway, so that works there. So let's go back over here real quick. Oh, in the style sheet, we need to address it. Let's say um, the div with the ID of content. Let's go in here and let's just say clear both. And what this will do is it will kill a float. And if you don't know what floats are and all this, please go back and review the CSS podcast. This will tell you what all this does. So now I've made it so I take an unordered list and I've turned it into navigation buttons. Okay. And so, so far, so good. This is pretty cool. Maybe we want to create a hover state for these. So let's keep it with the A tag over here. Let's just go A colon hover. And let's say color. And we'll actually, let's not just change this. Let's do, keep it real simple. Let's just say text decoration. Uh, none. I actually say underline. Oh, look at what we can do here. This is kind of cool here. What we can do is say background color dash color equals, let's say black. Can't spell the. And let's say the color of the text is white. Again, we've already done all these in this podcast. That's why I'm not explaining through these. It would take forever. And so now when I hover over, you can see these act like buttons. I have a black background and an underline and the text turns white. Okay. So we're good to go there. That's that, that works. Uh, again, if you don't know, if you don't understand what I'm doing here in the style sheets, you need to go back and review the, the uh, style sheet podcast episodes. Um, so we've got all that sorted out. Now, what I want to do is finally, this is what we're going to do. Let's go to the header document. And what I want to do is basically when I'm on a certain page, so for instance, when I'm on the home page, I want to know, I'm going to style this so I know what page I'm on. Okay. So let's say, let's create a class here. Class equals selected. Keep it easy. Okay. Now what have I done here? Okay. I've changed this class to selected and I'm going to target the home page. Now I'm going to do this in the next podcast so I keep everything simple here. But what we want to do is be able to change this. So depending on which page I'm on at that moment, I want this class of selected to be set to that page. And now let's go ahead and create that class so we know what we're talking about here. And let's just do it right under here. It's going to be a link and we're going to say a dot selected. And so this is going to have all the a tags of the selected class. And let's say the background is going to be, excuse me, background color is going to be black and the text color or color is going to be red. Okay. So now when I refresh this page, you can see that, okay, if I'm, if I'm on the home page, 
I know it because it keeps that background. But if I go to products, about, but see what I want to do is I want that to change for each page that I'm on. Okay, so this doesn't make a lot of sense the way it is. This is also a bit junky looking, so I might want to change that background color and just take that away. Just leave the text as red. That way when I'm, okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, but I want to know that that text is selected and it's red and I want that to reflect depending on what page I've done. Well, we're already passing a variable to tell us what page we're on. So in the next podcast, I'm going to show you how you can affect the style sheet by doing this. So let's move on now.